to be like the wings of the birds that rise from the lake to the trees. My heart wants to sigh like a chime that flies from a church on the breeze. To laugh like a brook when it trips and falls over stones in its way. To sing a should be pleased with our efforts. Out of 28 postulants, 16 or 17 are ready to enter the novitiate. Let's consider the doubtful ones again. There's Ermagard. There's no doubt about Ermagard. The religious life is no place for the pious. You mean the pretentiously pious, Stuberta. Mm. There's Christina and there's Maria. Oh, well, after last night, I feel there's no doubt in the Reverend Mother's mind about Maria. I gave her permission to leave the Abbey for the day. I told you, Sister Bertha. Reverend Mother, I've brought Maria. She's waiting. Sister Sophia, the mistress of the novices and the mistress of the postulants, do not see eye to eye about Maria. 
How do you feel about her? I love her very dearly, but she always seems to be in trouble, doesn't she? Exactly what I say. She climbs a tree and scrapes her knee. Her dress has got a tear. She waltzes on the way to mass and whistles on the stair. And underneath her wimple, she has feathers in her hair. I even heard her singing in the abbey. She's always late for chapel. She's always late for everything except for every meal. I hate to have to say it, but I'm very, very ill. Marie has not an answer to the Abbey. I'd like to say a word in her behalf. Maria makes me laugh. <laughs> instead of about her. I am grateful to you all. I want to talk to you. Yes, about last night. Reverend Mother, I was on my knees most of the night because I was late, and after you'd been so kind and given me permission to leave, I... It wasn't about your being late, Maria. I must have awakened half the Abbey before Sister Margaret heard me and opened the gate. Maria, very few of us were asleep. We could only think that you had lost your way, to be lost at night on that mountain. But Mother, I couldn't be lost on that mountain. That's my mountain. I was brought up on it. It was that mountain that brought me to you. Oh? When I was a little girl, I used to come down the mountain, climb a tree and look over into your garden. I'd see the sisters at work and hear them sing on their way to Vespers. Many times I went back up that mountain in the dark, singing all the way. And that brings up another transgression. I was singing yesterday and I was singing without your permission. Maria, it's only here in the Abbey that there is a rule about singing. But that's the hardest rule of all for me. Sister Margaret is always reminding me, but too late after I've started singing. And the day you were singing in the garden at the top of your voice. But Mother, it's that kind of song. I came to the window and when you saw me, you stopped. Yes, that's been on my mind ever since it happened. It's been on my mind too. I wish you hadn't stopped. 
singing always makes me feel better. Did you know I was brought up on the mountains myself? Maria, in spite of what you saw over the abbey wall, you weren't prepared for the way we live, were you? No, mother, but I pray and I try. Tell me, my child, what is the most important lesson you have learned here? <laughs> to find out what is the will of God and to do it, even if it's hard to accept, even then. Maria, the dress you wore when you first came to us, is that still in the robing room? I know, mother, I'm sure that it's been given to the poor. Sister Margareta says that when we enter the abbey, our worldly clothes are... Reverend Mother, why do you ask? Maria, it seems to be the will of God that you leave us. Leave? Leave here? No, Mother, please, no. For a while only, Maria. Don't send me away, Mother, please. This is what I want. This is my life. But are you ready for it? Perhaps if you go out into the world again for a time, you will return to us knowing what we expect and that we do expect it. I know what you expect, Mother. And I'll do it, I promise. Maria. It is God's will. But where am I to go? There is a family. A family of seven children. You like children. You're very good with them. They need a governess until September. Until September? Captain Von Trapp expects you this evening. He's a fine man and a brave one. He was given the Maria Theresa medal by the emperor. It is for heroism in the Adriatic. The captain in the Navy? Mother, he'll be very strict. Well, you're not going to his battleship. God bless you, Maria. What will this day be like? I wonder. What will my future be? I wonder. It could be so exciting to be out in this world, to be free. My heart should be wildly rejoicing. Oh, what's the matter with me?
Captain. And I'm Guild Butler, Fraulein. Oh, how do you do? You'll come with me, please. I am Captain Von Trapp. You are Fraulein. Maria. Maria Rayner. Now, Fraulein, as to your... Would you mind stepping over here a minute? Now, before the children meet you, you will put on another dress. But I haven't any other dress. When we enter the Abbey, our worldly clothes are given to the poor. What about this one? The poor didn't want this one. <laughs> this is what you would call a worldly dress. I would have made myself another dress, but I wasn't given time. I can make my own clothes. Good. I'll see that you're given some material. Today, if possible. Now, you will be in charge of my children. There are seven of them. You will find out how far they've progressed in their school and carry on from there. Each morning will be spent in the classroom and each afternoon, they march. You will see that they, see that they conduct themselves at all times with orderliness and decorum. The first rule in this house is discipline. Yes, sir. Now, children, this is your new Fraulein, Fraulein Maria. As I sound your signal, you will step forward and repeat your name. You, Fraulein, will listen and learn their calls. You can signal them when you want them. Liesel. Friedrich. Louisa. Kurt. Gita. Mata. Gradle. Now let's see how well you listened, Fraulein. I won't have to whistle for them, Reverend Captain. Oh, what I mean is, I'll be with them all the time. Not on all occasions. This is a large house and a large estate. They've been trained to come only when they hear their whistle. Now, when I want you, this is what you'll hear. You won't have to trouble, sir, because I couldn't answer to a whistle. But that's nonsense. Everyone in this house answers to a whistle. Well, I'll show you. Yes, sir. This is my orderly, my butler, Franz, Fraulein Maria. That is the executive officer, Frau Schmidt, the housekeeper, Fraulein Maria. Please be sure that her room is ready. Yes, sir. Well, I shall now leave you with the children. You are in command. Pardon me, sir. I don't know how to address you. You may call me Captain. Thank you, Captain. Here's your whistle, Captain. I won't need it, Captain. Well, now that there's just us, will you tell me your names again and tell me how old you are? Now you're... I'm Liesel. I'm 16 years old and I don't need a governess. Well, I'm glad you told me. We'll just be friends. I'm Friedrich. I'm 14. I'm a boy. A boy? <laughs> Why, you're almost a man. I'm Brigitte. You didn't tell me how old you are. Louisa. I'm Brigitte. She's Louisa. She's 13 years old, and you're smart. 
I'm nine and I think that your dress is the ugliest dress I ever saw. <laughs> Brigitte, you shouldn't say a thing like that. Why not? Don't you think it's ugly? If I did think so, I wouldn't say so. I'm Kurt. I'm 11. Almost. That's a nice age to be. 11 almost. I'm Martin. I'm going to be seven on Tuesday and I'd like a pink parasol. Pink is my favorite color too. <laughs> and you're Gretel. I'm going to tell you something. I've never been a governess before. How do I start? You mean you don't know anything about being a governess? No. Well, the first thing you have to do is tell father to mind his own business. No, Louisa, don't. I like her. All right, children. Outside, children, to take a walk. Father's orders. All right. Quick, quick, quick. Good night, Rolf. Yes? You don't have to say good night this early just because your father's home. How did you know my father was home? Oh, I have a way of knowing things. You're wonderful. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not. Really. Oh, yes, you are. I mean, how did you know two days ago that I would be here at this time tonight with the telegram for Franz? <laughs> Every year on this exact same day, Tori's gets a birthday telegram from his sister. You see, you are wonderful. <laughs> Can I come again tomorrow night? Rolf, you can't be sure you're going to have another telegram to deliver here tomorrow night. <laughs> I could come here by mistake. With the telegram from Colonel Schneider. He's here from Berlin and he's staying with the go lighter, but. No one's supposed to know he's here. Don't tell your father. Why not? Well, your father's pretty Austrian. We're all Austrian. <laughs> Some people think that we ought to be German, and they're pretty angry at those who don't think so. And <laughs> they're getting ready to. Well. Let's just hope your father doesn't get into any trouble. Don't worry about father. He was decorated for bravery. I know. I don't worry about him. The only one I worry about is his daughter. Me? Why? How old are you, Liesl? Sixteen. <laughs> What's wrong with that? You wait, little girl, on an empty stage For fate to turn the light on Your life, little girl, is an empty page That men will want to write on To write on You are 16, going on 17 Baby, it's time to think Better beware, be canny and careful you're on the brink You are 16 Going on 17 Fellows will fall in line Eager young lads and ways and cats will offer you food and wine Totally unprepared are you to face a world of men Timid and shy and scared are you of things beyond your ken. You need someone older and wiser telling you what to do. I am 17, going on 18. I'll take care of you.
tomorrow. I have this material he ordered for a new dress for you. How nice of him. Oh, even before it's made. This is the prettiest dress I've ever had. I hope the captain will like it because I want to ask him for more material. More? Oh, not for me. For the children. For play clothes. The Von Trapp children never play. They march. But they're children. They have to climb trees and roll in the grass. Think of all the rocks and caves. The captain says that the best exercise is marching. The children will continue to march. I hope you find your room comfortable. Yes, thank you. There'll be new drapes for the window in the alcove. They'll be hung tomorrow. But these curtains are very good. There will be new curtains. Will the captain be away long? I don't know. Of course, he has to come home every time he hires a new governess. Sometimes, I think the children only get rid of their governess. They want to see their father again. Well, he must want to see them too. Ever since his wife died, they remind him too much of her. But that away, won't be needing it here. Why not? The captain won't have music here. He won't have music? And he used to love music. There'd be wonderful evenings here. Why could sing? He could play the violin or guitar. But now he's shut all that out of his life. So that's why he's the way he is. But not to have music. That's wrong for him and wrong for the children too. It will work out. Captain may marry before the summer's over. That would change everything. They'd have a mother again. Going to rain. Better close your window. God, I know now that I've been sent here on a mission. I must help these children to love their mother and to prepare them to win her love so that she will never want them to leave her. And I pray that this family will become a happy family in my sight. God bless the captain. God bless Liesel and Friedrich, Louisa, Brigitte, Marta, and Phil Gretel. And I forgot the other boy. What's his name? Well, God bless what's his name. God bless the Reverend Mother and Sister Margareta and everybody at Nuremberg Abbey. And now, dear God, about Liesel. 
help her to know that I am her friend. And help her to tell me what she's been up to. Are you going to tell her me? Help me to be understanding so that I may guide her footsteps. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Well, I was out taking a walk. And somebody locked the doors earlier than usual, and I didn't want to wake everybody up. So when I saw your window open, I... Are you going to tell Father? Did you climb that trellis to get up here? Yes, that's how we always got into this room to play tricks on the governess. Louisa can climb it with a toad in her hand. Hey, Sol, were you out walking all by yourself? You know... If we wash this dress out tonight, nobody would notice it in the morning. Then all of this can stay just between you and me. You could put this on. Take your dress in there and put it to soak in the bathtub. Then come back out here and sit on the edge of my bed and we'll have a talk. I told you today I didn't need a governess. Well, maybe I do. <laughs> oh, it's you, Gretel. Are you afraid? You're not afraid of a thunderstorm, are you? You just stay right here with me. Where are the others? Oh no, it was Kurt. That's it, Kurt. That's the one I left out. God bless Kurt. Why does it do that? Well, the lightning says something to the thunder, and the thunder answers it back. I wish it wouldn't not be so loud. Why does the thunder get so angry and make me want to cry? Well, whenever anything's bothering me or makes me feel unhappy, I just try to think of nice things. Well, what, what kind, kind of, of things? Daffodils, green meadows, skies full of stars, raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens, bright cover kettles and warm woolen mittens, brown paper packages tied up with strings. These are a few of my favorite things. Colored ponies and crisp apple strudels, doorbells and sleigh bells and schnitzel with noodles, wild geese that fly with food on their wings. These are a few of my favorite things. Girls in white dresses with blue satin sashes, snowflakes that stay on my nose and eyelashes, silver wings in two springs. These are a few of my favorite things. Kettles and warm woolen mittens, brown paper packages tied up with strings. These are a few of my favorite things. Cream colored ponies and crisp apple strudels, doorbells and sleigh bells and schnitzel with noodles, wild geese that fly with poop on their wings. These are a few of my favorite things. <laughs> Girls in white dresses with blue satin sashes, snowflakes that stay.
Did I not tell you that bedtime is to be strictly observed in this household? The thunderstorm, I just thought that... Yes, sir, you did. All right, children, not to bed. Hurry along. Everybody sings. What songs do you know? We don't know any songs. You don't? No. no. Well, now I know where I'm going to begin. I'm going to teach you how to sing. Let's start at the very beginning. A very good place to start. When you read, you begin with you sing, you begin with Jam and run That will bring us back to 
of song, do, re, mi, fa, so, and so on? Do, re, mi, fa, so, and so on are only the tools we use to build a song. Once you have these notes in your head, you can make a million different tunes. How? By mixing them up, like this. So, do, la, fa, mi, do, re. Now you try it. So, do, la, fa, mi, do, re. So, do, la, ti, do, e, re, do. So, do, la, ti, do, re, do. Good. Now let's put it all together. So, do, la, fa, mi, do, re. So, do, la, ti, do, re, do. Good. But it doesn't mean anything. So you put in words. One word for every note. Like this. When you Dad father, I thought we were having coffee out here. Sir, your dead father is still on telephone. No sign of the children yet, Franz. No, sir, not yet. Georg, those mountains. They're magnificent. Yes. Well, they're not like any other mountains. Well, they're friendly. You see that green stretch of woods over there? When the wind blows through it, it's like a restless sea. And that sweet little village. Well, that's not a village. That's a town. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt its feelings. It's fun being with you. <laughs> You're quite an experience for me. You're quite an experience for me, too. Somewhere in you, there's a fascinating man. Occasionally, I catch a glimpse of him, and when I do, he's exciting. Exciting? Well, I've never been called exciting before. I'm beginning to understand you a little better now that I see you here. You know, you're a little like those mountains. 
except that you keep moving. How can you be away from this place as much as you are? Maybe I've been searching for a reason to come back to stay. Georg, I like it here very much. Well, Max can't still be on the telephone. I know he's desperate to get singers for the Kaltzberg Festival, but... You like it here? Well, we'd have to spend some time in Vienna. I have Heinrich's estate to look after. Well, I thought that was a corporation now. It is, and I'm president. You? A president of a corporation? After all, I managed Heinrich's affairs for years before he died. I just can't see you sitting behind a desk. Well, of course, I wear a business suit and smoke a big cigar. <clears throat> Excuse me, Captain. Herr Detweiler would like his coffee. While he's telephoning? He's just finished. I'm sorry I'm late. Any luck? Would you like this for the Coldstone Festival? The finest core group in all of Austria, the greatest mixed quartet in all of Europe, and the best soprano in the world. Now, Max, that's something I'd love to hear. Yeah, so would I. All I got to know there was a boss of and he's even profound. Now, Max, you always come up with a good festival concert. Why? Because it's like my motto says. Never start out looking for the people you wind up getting. That's why I've been phoning everywhere. Paris, Stockholm, Rome, On London. Georg's telephone. How else could I afford it? Why am I here? Well, I hoped it was because you liked me. Well, of course I like you. Why shouldn't I like you? You live like a king. <laughs> you have an excellent wine, yes. sir. I, I like rich people. <laughs> I like the way they live. Like the way I live when I'm with them. Speaking as a government official, Georg, I was wondering if... A uh, cathedral. You have one? Well, we have an abbey. Nonberg Abbey. Do they have a choir? A beautiful one. Good. In the next few days, I have to visit all these towns, listen to Sanger Boone's choirs, quartets. You'll be here for meals, won't you? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> it was a town just about that size, actually, uh, Wattsman, where I discovered the St. Ignatius Boys Choir. In 1933, they became very famous, traveled all over the world. Oh, yes. What ever became of them? And by the time they, their voices changed, they were rich enough to live in America. <laughs> Lives in that dilapidated castle down there. Rumble Stoltzkin? Baron Elberfield, the oldest family in the valley. I'd like to meet him. I'd like to meet all your friends. Why don't you throw a dinner for me while I'm here? Nothing big, just something lavish. <laughs> well, I wouldn't know whom to invite. These days it's hard to tell who's a friend and who's an enemy. Well, this is a bad time to make enemies. Let's make some friends. I can't understand what's become of the children. You're not worried about them, are you? Well, they should have been here to welcome you. Well, it couldn't have been an intentional slight because they haven't met me yet. <laughs> Excuse me, I'll try to find them. Elsa, have you made up Georg's mind yet? Is he going to marry you? Oh, yes. Well, he hasn't admitted it yet. There seems to be something standing in his way. You don't know what it is? No. Well, I do. What? It's very simple. It's money. Money? He's rich and you're rich. You know the famous love affairs the lovers have to struggle. In characters away upstairs the lovers starve and snuggle. The famous for misfortune which they seem to have no fear of. Why are lovers who are very rich you very? Seldom year of Not a sign of them anywhere.
I have that Twyla. Hoyle! You've delivered your telegram, now get out! Bear, he's just a boy! I am an Austrian! I will not be hiled! Georg, why can't you just look at things the way I do? What's going to happen is going to happen. Just be sure it doesn't happen to you. Max, it's a good thing you haven't any character. Because if you did, I'm convinced I'd hate you. You couldn't hate me? I'm too lovable. <laughs> Her death while there's a call for you. I'll take that. Lay or lay or lay or She yodeled back to the lonely goat herd. Lay or lay or lay or Soon her mama with a gleaming glow. Captain, you're home. Father, you're home. Straight line. Get cleaned up, get back into uniform, and report back here. At once. Fraulein Maria. Where did you get these abominations? Out of a nightmare? Out of some curtains. The curtains that used to hang in my bedroom. There was plenty of wear left in them. You mean to say that the people of the neighborhood I've seen my children wearing old curtains. Yes, they've become very popular. Everyone smiled at them. Well, I won't wonder. They say, there go Captain Von Trapp's children. My children have always been a credit to my name. But Captain, they weren't. They were just unhappy little marching machines. I don't care to hear from you about my children. Well, you must hear from someone. You're not home long enough to know. I said I don't want to hear it. I know you don't, but you've got to. Take Liesel. Liesel isn't a child anymore, and you keep treating her as one. Captain, you're going to have a mutiny on your hands. And Friedrich, he's shy, he's aloof. Friedrich needs you, he needs your confidence. Don't tell me about my son. Brigitte could tell you about him. She could tell you a lot more if you got to know her, because she notices things. She always tells the truth, especially when you don't want to hear it. Kurt, he's sensitive. He's easily hurt, and... You ignore him. You brush him aside the way you do all of them. I haven't finished yet. <laughs> Louisa just wants to have a good time. You just gotta let her have a good time. And Marta? I don't know about yet, but someone's gotta find out about her. And little Gretel just wants to be loved. Captain, love Gretel. Love all of them. 
They need you. Stop. Stop it. You will pack your things and return to the Abbey as soon as you can. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said those things. Well, not in the way I said them. After you've gone, there will be consequences. The hills are alive with the sound of What's that? Singing. With Singing. The songs they your children. Sung. I told them to sing the French when they met her. Georg, why haven't you told me how charming your children are? Children, I'd like you to show them around straight into the gardens. Yes, show me the gardens. I want to see everything with you. I don't know any of your names yet, but it's okay. I'm sure I won't have them straight for a while. My name is Marta. It's not. I'm Marta. She's Louisa. Oh! Whoop. Hello, ladies. back into my home. I'd forgotten to laugh like a brook when it trips and falls over stones in its way. To sing through the night like a lark who is learning to moved. Yes, I'm sure he was pleased. He's asked me to stay on with the children. Oh, you're staying on. Until September. September. Then I go back to the Abbey. The Abbey? I'm going to become a nun. Oh, how nice. <laughs> I'll pray for you.
It's the obvious display of the Austrian flag. You are a German, aren't you? <laughs> I'm not a German, I'm an Austrian. There's going to be an I warn you, and everyone like you. And that goes for our- Baron Elberfield! How good to have you and your wife here again. Frau Schrader's charming, Georg. I hope she isn't ill. Oh no, just a headache. I'm on my way up to get her now. We'll find you out here. Father, I don't think these people are having a very good time. Well, half the people I invited aren't speaking to the other half. Well, Father, maybe they're having a good time not speaking to each other. <coughs> Sir, Ralph Schrader asked me to let you know that she'll be joining you in a few minutes. Thank you. You might see if she would like a glass of brain. Well, Kurt, that's how it's done. Your face is all red. <laughs> I guess I'm not very used to dancing. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, good evening, Frau Schrader. I hope you're feeling better, Frau Schrader. I am. Thank you, Kurt. Come along, little ones. Hello, Uncle Max. We're having a party. Good. Uh, tell your father it's sure to be a success. I'm here. <laughs> Max. Elsa, without a doubt, you are the most beautiful corporation president in the entire world. Yes. Max, you're back. And as usual, just in time for dinner. Georg, did you think you could throw a gala without me? Oh, dear. Now we have an odd man. A little odd, but charming. <laughs> Liesel. Would you mind running to tell Frau Schmidt to set two extra places at the table? And I'd like to see Fraulein Maria. Yes. Two places. But we need another woman. Oh, Liesel. Oh, she's much too young. I was going to ask Fraulein Maria. I'm not serious. But of course, she's a nurse. Well, I don't think of her in that way. I don't mind. But your friends, you can't ask them to dine with them again. Why not? Elsa, tell him why not. Max, can you change in a hurry? Yes, we could use you tonight, Max. I suppose. Frau Schrader, they're talking about you over there. Oh, come on, Georg. I've been dodging these people for hours. Brigitte, have you seen your father anywhere? Good evening, Fraulein Maria. <laughs> Herr Tatweiler, it's nice to see you again. Yes, you're going to. I knew it all along. Frau Schrader didn't have a headache. She just wanted to get out of the party. She was faking. Now, Brigitte, you shouldn't say things you don't know are true. But I do know. I heard her say the father that she'd been dodging this But that doesn't mean that she didn't have a headache. It's very important. 
important that you children like Frau Schroeder. I like her, all right, but why is it important? Because I think she's going to become your new mother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Frau Lein, father's never going to marry her. Why, he couldn't. Why couldn't he? Because he's in love with you. Now, Brigitte, that's just you the kind of thing. You must know that. No, Brigitte, no. Remember the other night when we were all sitting on the floor singing that Edelweiss song he taught us? And after we finished, you laughed at him for forgetting the words. But he stopped singing to look at you. And the way his voice sounds when he speaks to you? No, Brigitte, no. And the way you just looked at him now when you were dancing. You were in love with him. Come, Brigitte, it's time for bed. Fräulein Maria, you won't be eating with the children tonight. You'll be dining with us. Oh, it's already been settled. You'll have to change in a hurry. And Maria, wear that dress you wore the other night while we were singing. It was lovely, soft and white. Oh, no. The children will want to say goodnight, the way they did last night. Oh, please, Georg, can the children say goodnight? Not here, Elsa. Oh, please, for me. Presto, change you. <laughs> Max, you're just in time. The children. Now, children. <laughs> Elsa, just a moment. You're extraordinary. Pearl and Maria, 
Austria taught them to do it. <laughs> I've been searching all over Austria for an act like this, and I, I find it here. Wait a minute, Max. A singing group of seven children in, fa in one family. What are the odds? Georg didn't even want them to perform in front of the guests tonight. I had to convince him. You have influence. You must speak to him. Max. Elsa, I hardly need to remind you how important this is for Austria. Is there anyone to be any harm? She wanted to come to me. It's strange. <laughs> she's happy to be here, but she's unhappy too. Why did they send her back to us? She doesn't speak. She hasn't spoken except in prayer. I shall see her. This must have been a trying experience for you. It was, Reverend Mother. Has it taught you anything? I've learned that I never want to leave these walls ever again. Why did they send you back to us? They didn't send me back. I left without telling them I was going. Without saying goodbye. Maria, what happened? Why did you do this? I was frightened. Frightened. I was confused. I felt... I never felt that way before, and... I knew I couldn't stay. And I knew that here I would be away from it. That here I would be safe. Maria, our Abby is not to be used as an escape. You must face him again. I can't face him again. Maria... Are you in love with Captain Von Trapp? I don't know. I don't know. Tell me about it, my child. Brigitte said that I was and that her father was in love with me and... And there he was. And we were looking at each other and... I could hardly breathe. And I knew I couldn't stay. But do you like him, Maria? Oh, yes. Did you let him see how you felt? If I did, I didn't know that I did. That's what's been torturing me. I was there on God's errand. To have asked for the captain's love would have been wrong. I don't know, Mother. But I do know this. I am ready at this very moment to take the vows of poverty, obedience, and chastity. Maria, the love of a man and a woman is holy, too. When we first talked together, you told me you remember your mother and father before they died. Do you remember, were they happy? Yes, Mother, they were very happy. Maria, 
You were born of their happiness and of their love. And my daughter, you have a great capacity to love. What you must find out is, how does God want you to spend your love? I've pledged my life to God's service. I've pledged my life to God. My daughter, if you love this man, it doesn't mean that you love God less. You must find out. You must go back. Don't send me back, mother, please. Let me stay here. These walls were not meant to shut out problems. You have to face them. You have to find the life you were born to live. But how do I find it? Look for it. Imagine that you're standing on the stage of a big concert hall. What concert hall, Uncle Max? Any concert hall, maybe Cotsburg Concert Hall, but a concert hall filled with people. Now once more. <laughs> Gretel, why don't you sing loud? I have a sore finger. Now you can sing loud for Uncle Max. The night of the concert, you all sing so beautifully with such a spirit. Let's see if we can get that back. Oh, uh, they wanted to sing for me, the darlings. <laughs> but they just don't sing as well as they used to. We need Fräulein Maria. We do not need Fräulein Maria. You can sing just as well with me. Now, Georg, I have an experience with choirs, quartets, Max. and... Please. Now, what would you like to sing? Do a deer, a female deer, bray a drop of golden sun. Me a name. We are not to mention Fräulein Maria. Oh, Max, I feel like a brisk walk. Yes, that's exactly what I need. I don't suppose anyone's using the car.
now what are we going to sing? <coughs> the hills are alive. Lisa, did you play any of your tricks, any of your jokes on Fraulein Maria? Only those she liked and laughed at. You didn't put toads in her bed? No, father. Something must have happened for her to leave us the way that she did, without even saying goodbye. Is Fraulein Maria ever coming back? No, darling, I don't think so. But she was the best governess we ever had. Well, you're not going to have a governess anymore. Oh, good. I'm not sure that's so good. Um... It's all been settled as of last night. I'm very happy. Well, it's time for my afternoon tea. <coughs> when Fräulein Maria wanted to feel better, she used to sing that song, remember? Yes. Yes. All right, let's try it. Raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens. Bright copper kettles and warm woolen mittens. Brown paper carriages light up with strings. These are a few of my favorite things. Why I don't feel better? <laughs> with blue satin sashes, snowflakes that stay on my nose and eyelashes. Maria! Maria! Oh, it's winters that melt into spring. These are a few of my favorite things. When the dog bites, when the bee sings, when I'm feeling sad, I simply I must find your father right away. I'll find him. I'll come with you. How's your sore finger? You remember. Liesel, are you all right? Yes, Fräulein, I'm all right. Many telegrams lately? No, Fräulein. Now I'll be glad to go to boarding school. Liesel, you can't use boarding school to escape your problems. You have to face them. Oh, I have so much to tell you about. We have some things to tell you, too. You must have a great deal to tell me. Married? <laughs> Are you sure? Yes, he just told us. He told us himself. We found him! Liesel? Luisa, Brigitte, <laughs> boys. Maria will be in the room. You've come back. Yes, Captain. You left us without any explanation whatsoever. It was Which... very wrong of me. Forgive me. Why did you do this to us? Tell me. Please don't ask me. Anyway, the reason no longer exists. Well, then you're back to stay. Only until you can find arrangements for another governess. No. You've been missed by the children. I've missed... Everybody missed you very much. Nothing was the same while you were away. Everything I... felt wrong. We'll talk about it later, Maria. Now, why don't you go up to the nursery with the children?
Maria. A new dress? We have a new postulant. Georg, settle this for Max and I, will you? How far down the mountain does your property go? Can you make out that stone wall over there? Well, that's the property line. See, I told you. I didn't argue about it. I know, that makes me furious. I don't like to win without a fight. Oh, did I mention, the butler said that there was a call for you, a call from Berlin. Uh, Georg, what were we just talking about? Excuse me. While you were gone, there was a long-distance call from Berlin. As she just said. Thank you, Franz. Uh, Georg, what were we just talking about? This isn't the first call you've had from Berlin, Max. Georg, you know I have no political convictions. Can I help it if others do? Let's not bring this up again. The Germans have promised not to invade Austria. Max knows that. Then why does he bother answering those calls from Berlin? Because if they don't keep their promise, I for one would like to have some friends among them. Naturally. Oh? So you agree, too? Georg, this is the way I look at it. There once was a man, and he was lying on his deathbed. They were reading him the last rites, and they asked him, Do you renounce the devil and all his works? And he said, At this point, I prefer not to make any enemies. <laughs> Georg, if they should invade us, would you defy them? Yes. Do you have any idea what might happen to you? To your property? To your children? To everyone close to you? To Elsa? To me? What will you do if the Nazis come? What anyone with any sense would do. Just sit tight and wait for it all to blow over. And you think it will? One thing is sure. Nothing you can do will make any difference. Relax, dear. Take the world off your shoulders. No, Georg, it's time you learn to be a realist. All you need to do is be non-committal. Let them think you're on their side. I will not bow my head to the men that I despise. You won't have to bow your head. Just stoop a little. Oh. How charming. It's an obvious and simple fact of science, Georg. There's no way to stop it. You're a fool if you worry over anyone but your own self. On one thing alone, we agree. Each one is important to himself. But you don't win by giving up, and you don't outwit a lion by putting your head... Sir! Your call from Berlin. They said it's urgent. In the lion's mouth! I will take it in a moment. Might as well talk to them now. Go. Go. <laughs> Georg, I feel I know what's going to happen here. Can't you see things my way? No. Not if you're willing to see things their way. There's one thing you do better here than we do in Vienna. Your sunsets. I'm going to miss them. Captain? Oh, pardon oh, me. Fräulein Maria. Georg, you didn't tell me Fräulein Marie was back. I'm... I'm delighted. Thank you. Captain, the children would like to know if they can take a holiday from your lessons tomorrow, so that we can go on a picnic. Yes, I don't mind. That will make them very happy. And may I be permitted to grant you happiness too, Frau Schrader, Captain. The children have told me that you're going to be married. Oh? Well, the children were mistaken. Georg, I've got to pack my things if I'm to return to Vienna. If you feel you must, I'll have Franz get the car ready. No, I can do that. Auf Wiedersehen, Georg. Goodbye, Maria. I'm sorry if I said something I shouldn't have said. 
you did say the wrong thing. But you said it at the right time. The children told me that you were going to marry Frau Schrader. We found we just couldn't go the same way. That door is shut. Sister Margaret always says, when God shuts a door, he, he opens a window. Maria, why did you run away to the Abbey? Well, what made you come back? The Mother Abbess. She said that you have to look for your life. Often, when you find it, you don't recognize it. No. Not at first. Then, one day, one night, all of a sudden it stands before you. Yes. Looking at you now, Maria, I realize this isn't something that's just happened. It's something I felt deep inside for many weeks now. You knew it too. What was it that told you? Brigitte. <laughs> she said when we were dancing that night. Well, she was quite right. That wasn't just an ordinary dance, was it? I hadn't danced like that since I was a very little girl. It's quite different after you've grown up, isn't it? When you were a very little girl, did a very little boy ever kiss you? Uh-huh. Well, that's quite different, too. Is it? It is different. <laughs> someone I should go to to ask permission to marry you? Why don't we ask the children?
Children, children, Lisa, Friedrich, Luisa, Brigitte, Marta, Gretel, get down here. I have something to show you. See, Kostberg Festival, 1938. Here are all your names. Lisa, Friedrich, Luisa, Brigitte, Kurt, Marta, and Gretel. Because you're the youngest. Liesl, I'll be counting on you. Day after tomorrow, I need them all on the bus by 11 o'clock. Can you help me, please? Galactor is here. He wants to know why we aren't flying the new flag. Hi. I tried to keep quiet. When is Captain Monstrap returning? Who knows? <laughs> when a man's on his honeymoon, he tends to take These his time. These are not times for joking. It has been four days since the Oculus. This is the only house in the province that is not flying the flag of the Third Reich. I understand. The flag with the black spider on it? Brigitte! You permit such remarks in this house? Who are you? I am accidentally identified by the first secretary of the Ministry of Education and Culture. That was in the old regime. No, in the old regime I was third secretary. Now I'm first. Good. Then you can order them to fly the new flag. Captain Montrap wouldn't! I mean, I only take my orders from Captain Montrap. You shall take your orders from us. And so will the captain. Hi. Hi. Why was he so cross? Everybody's cross these days. Is father going to be in trouble? He doesn't have to be. The thing to do today is to get along with everybody. Now I need you all on the bus by 11 o'clock. Can we do that? Uncle Max, are you sure Father is going to be all right with this? He'll be pleased and proud. Liesl, do you think so? No. Brigitte, don't you trust me? No. <laughs> that makes you a very smart girl. Eleven o'clock. Don't forget. Fräulein Liesl, see what I have here. That's Father's luggage. They're, They're back! back! They're back! They're back! Uh, Liesl, they'll be in such a rush to tell us so much. Uh, we shouldn't hurry about telling them anything. Children! Mother! 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 Didn't expect you back until next week. <laughs> Max, it's good you're here. There's much I want to know. We missed you so very much. <laughs> what did you miss the most? We missed all the noise you make in the morning. The noise you make telling each other to be quiet. We missed hearing you sing. You've come back just in time to hear us sing. Uh... Look, Father, we're singing the Colesburg Festival Friday night. Let me see that. Max, are you responsible for this? I've just been waiting to talk to you about it, Georg. <laughs> you can't talk me out of this one, Max. Presents! Presents! Let's go oh, open them in the nursery. <laughs> <laughs> Georg. I didn't get a weekend share. I had to make a last minute decision. I was very lucky to have been able to enter them at all. It'll be the talk of the festival. Seven children in one family. Not my family. 
the committee heard them. They were enchanted. Really, Max? What did they say? You never heard such praise. Georg, did you hear? The Von Trapp family does not sing in public. But if they make people happy... And for the festival. People travel from all over the world. It is out of the question. Georg, is this for Austria? There is no Austria. But the uncle has happened peacefully. Let us at least be grateful for that. Grateful? To these swine? Maria, you have to speak to him. I, you must at least pretend to work with these people. I admire the way he feels. You know that. But you must convince him. He has to compromise. Max, we can't make Georg any less than what he is. Then I'll talk to him. These children don't sing in the festival well. Your reflection on Austria certainly wouldn't do me any good. Maria. I've always known you loved us children. Now I know you love father. I do, Liesl. I love him very much. How can you be sure? Because I don't think first of myself anymore. I think first of him. Now I know how to spend my life. A bell is no bell till you ring it. A song is no song till you sing it. And you belong to him You may think this kind of adventure Never may come to you You are 16, going on 17 Wait a year or two Captain Von Trapp. You stay here with Lethal. I'll take it to him. I'm under orders to make sure that he gets it. I'm, so, I'm sure you can trust me to give it to him. I have my orders. Silly. They're married. Uh, Franz, this telegram is to be delivered to the heads of the Captain Von Trapp. Hi. Hi. Even Franz. Yes, even Franz. Even me, even everybody in Salisbury, except the great Captain Von Trapp. If he knew what was good for him, he'd come over and join the Nazis. Rolf, don't talk like that. And if he doesn't, then he'd better get out of the country. There are things that happen today to a man like that. And he'd better get out quick. <laughs> Cry all you want. Just remember what I said before it's too late. And you remember too. Liesl, don't cry. How could he turn on father that way? Maybe he wasn't threatening your father. Maybe he was warning him. Liesl? What is it, Georg? 
I didn't think I'd have to make a decision this soon. Berlin has offered me a commission in their navy. Well, Georg? I can't just brush this aside. I admit, it would be exciting to have a ship under me again. What I mean is, it would be a relief and a comfort to know that you and the children are safe. But it also means... Please, Maria, help me. Georg, whatever you decide will be my decision. Thank you. I know now I can't do it. Of course not. We'll have to get out of Austria right away. You'll have to leave tonight, now. Not without my family. And we can't just pack up and leave. They'll be watching us now. We need to plan. We have to have time. Sir! Admiral Braun Schreiber of the Navy of the Third Reich is here to see you. Thank you, Franz. They didn't give us time. Then we'll have to make time. I'll bring him in. We must be careful. <coughs> Maria, what is happening? Stormtroopers, this is exactly what I was afraid of. Liesel, quickly, find the children, quickly. Max, you stay with Georg. I need the children. Right this way, Admiral. We can talk in here. Admiral von Schreiber may present Herr Detweiler. Child. Max, I believe you know Herr Zeller. Would you gentlemen care to sit down? We are here on business. Captain von Schreiber, a telegram was sent to you three days ago. Well, I've just received it. I've been away. I only returned home half an hour ago. And Captain Montrap just returned from his honeymoon, sir. Congratulations, Captain. Thank you, sir. Your record in the war is very well remembered by us, Captain. Well, it's good to hear you say that, sir. Let's get to the points, if you don't mind. In our Navy, we hold you in very high regard. That explains why I'm here. Having heard no answer to the telegram, the High Command has sent me here in person. Well, I'm very flattered, but I haven't I'm had time. I present you with your commission. I am deeply conscious of the honor, sir. Orders. To report to the naval base at Bremerhaven. Immediately. Immediately? But that would be impossible for you, Georg. Admiral, may I present my wife, the Baroness von Trapp? Madam. What I mean is, the children will be performing in the Kultzberg Festival Friday night. You see? The von Trapp family singers. Here in the program. It's been arranged by the Ministry of Education and Culture. Friday night. This is Wednesday. That's only a matter of three days. It might be possible. You can report to Bremerhaven by Monday. Admiral, do you have a telephone? Uh, this way, Admiral. Uh, perhaps if there's any question, adding the weight of my voice might clear some of the room. It gives only the names of the children. Well, it says the Von Trapp family singers. I'm head of the Von Trapp family. You may believe what you choose, Herr Zeller. It doesn't say what you want to say. What do you want to say, Captain? It's your privilege to come to the concert and find out. I'd like to hear what you're going to sing now. Sing what you're going to sing at the concert. Sing. Liesel, will you give us a dough? Doe a deer, a female deer, Ray a drop of golden sun, me a name I call myself. Uh, a long, long way to run. Oh, 
folks in a town that was quite remote herd. Lay yoda, 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 Of a castle motored, lay yoda lay yoda lay yoda lay. Men on the road with a low two toed herd, lay yoda lay yoda loo. Men in the midst of a table dotard, lay yoda lay yoda lay yoda. Men drinking beer with the foam of float herd, lay yoda lay yoda loo. Oh ho, lay yoda lay ho ho ho, lay yoda lay. With a gleaming glow turd, lay yoda lay yoda lay yoo. What a duet for a girl and go turd, lay yoda lay yoda loo. Oh ho, lay yoda lee ho ho ho, lay yoda lay. Oh ho, lay yoda lee ho, lay yoda lee ho lay. Happier they, lady oh, lady lee oh, oh lady oh, oh lady ho. Soon a duet will become a trio, lay yoda lay.
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. The festival concert is coming to its final conclusion, except, of course, that we don't know what that conclusion will be. But while the judges are putting their heads together towards their final decision, I thought that we might like to have an encore. It appears, actually, that this may be the last opportunity that the Von Trapp family has to sing together for quite some time. I've just been informed that immediately following the concert, the, fa the Captain Von Trapp will leave for his new command of the naval forces of the Third Reich. A guard of honor is waiting off stage to escort him directly to the base at Bremerhaven. And so one last time I present to you the family Von Trapp. Little bird is popping out to say cuckoo. Kill, 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 kill. Regretfully kill, they tell kill, us, but firmly kill, they compel kill, us to say goodbye to you. Gentlemen, thank you. I have here the decisions of our distinguished judges. For our first award, we would like to announce it goes to the trio of the Sangerbund of Havijin. For our second prize, the award goes to Fraulein Schweiger of St. Agatha's First Church in Murbach. <laughs> and for our first prize, the highest musical honor in all of the Ostmark goes to the family Von Trapp. We didn't mean to put the Abbey in this much danger. It's outrageous. The church has always been a sanctuary. Not with these people. This is the third time they have searched the Abbey. Look there! This is why we put you out here in the garden. They always search the inside, never the outside. Is this God's house? Shh. Yes, darling. You must all be very, very quiet. I'll let you know when they're gone. Can we go home? 
No, darling. We have a long drive ahead of us. Liesel, we must stay close to each other. Never thank you. As soon as it's safe, we'll start. We hit our car deep in the woods. The car will do you no good. They left a guard in the road in front of the gate. I've listened to the wireless. All the roads are blocked. The borders are closed. I've always thought of these mountains as my friends. Standing there, protecting us. Now they seem to become my enemies. Never your enemies, haven't you read? I will lift up mine eyes to the hills, from whence cometh my help. Georg, I know those mountains, as well as I know this garden, and so do you. And once we're over that mountain, we'll be in Switzerland. But the children. We can help them. Father, we can do it without help. You'll have help. For ye shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. Mountains and hills shall break forth before you into singing. <laughs> 